Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am Richard Ross, your instructor. In today's video, we're going to talk about progress bars a little more. Now, I did a video a few months ago about progress bars. I've had a couple of people email me since that want to know how they can use a progress bar on a single form to show how much of that form is completed. If you've got a big form with a whole bunch of controls on it, you want to know that you're 65% completed? Well, in this video, I'll show you how to do exactly that. Today's question comes from David in Virginia Beach, one of my gold members. David says, I really enjoyed your video on progress bars. I have a form with about 70 text boxes that require information to be entered over several weeks time, not all at once. Is there any way to create a progress meter indicating how much of the form has been completed to date? I would like it to appear at the top of the form and show how each record's progress stands as it's changed. Thanks, and live long and prosper. David was replying to my email signature on the bottom. I've got live long and prosper on each of my emails, if you've ever emailed me before. But yes, of course, you can definitely use the progress bar to indicate which of the fields on your form have been filled in. Let me show you how to do it. Now, if you have not yet watched my original progress bar video, go watch it right now. It's on my website. It's also on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below that you can click on, but there's the page. Go watch that because I'm going to use that in this video. Okay, here's a copy of my blank customer template. You can also find a copy of this database on my website. It's a free download. It's basically got some forms and a simple customer table, so I don't have to keep reinventing the wheel for each video. It's got a basic customer form. It looks like that, and of course, a customer list. The customer table is right there. Now, we don't need all of these fields for this example, so I'm going to cut this down just a little bit to make the video a little easier. So let's get rid of all of this stuff. Let's keep like five fields. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's chop all this stuff off. Make it easy for just for the purposes of class. All right, so there we go. And I'm going to move this stuff down a little bit so I can put my progress bar on the top. Now I'm going to go grab the progress bar from my other database that I built in the previous video. Gold members, you can find this in the download folder. The rest of you are going to have to type stuff in. Now I'm feeling a little generous today. I'm going to actually use the progress bar that I created in the members only extended cut. So I'm going to show that to everybody right now. Yeah, it's a bonus. Don't go telling everybody now. This is just for you guys. Now in this video, I showed you how to make a progress bar that runs whenever you do an automated batch. Like if you've got a bunch of queries that have to run, or for my members, I showed how to do it with a record set in my developer class. If you click on this button, it says, are you sure? And then the progress bar, you can see it running up there. It's basically just faking a process in the background, but the, the goal was to show you how the progress bar works. So I'm going to take this P bar F, that's my progress bar form, and just bring it over into my other database real quick. And then I'll show you how to copy the controls. So here's P bar F, click and drag it, boom, drop it in there. We can close that database. Now what is inside P bar F? Well, if we go to design view, here's the progress bar. It's really simple to build. All right, I show this in the extended cut. There's two text boxes here. There's a gray one in the background. That's just to provide the backdrop. All right, and I call that one PB back. And there's one in the foreground that's called PB front. All right, and that's the one that I changed the size of it to make it slide across the other one. All right, how do I do that exactly with a little bit of code? That's in the extended cut of the other video. If you want to learn how to do that, you have to go watch that one. But I'm going to give you the code that you need to make it work. You just lay these over the top of each other, and they form a nice little progress bar, just like that. Okay, so I'm going to copy these two objects over to the other form. All right, copy, go back to my customer form, design view, and then paste them in. Paste, there we go. All right, there's my progress bar. Now, it doesn't do anything without the source code, so let's go over here and grab the code. Up on the Design tab, go to this little guy right here. It says View Code. That opens up your Visual Basic window, and all you need is this right here. It's My P Bar. All right, that's how you control the progress of the progress bar. In a nutshell, you send it a value, percent complete, which is a number from 0 to 100. You set the front progress bar visible to true. You set the width of PB front equal to the width of PB back times the percentage. So if you send it 50, it's going to make it 50% the width of the back text box. See how that works? And then it just changes the label 
well, not really a label, but the text in it. So it says percent complete and then 50%. It's very simple. I do this in the extended cut, but we need to put this in the other form now. So copy that. You can close this form now, save changes, no. Now in this form, go to the code. All right, just put that in anywhere up top here. Paste. There you go. Now we can call my P bar anywhere we want. Want to see how that works? Well, just drop a button in here to test it. Cancel the wizard. All right, I'll put test in here. Right click, build event. And in here, I'll just say my P bar 50. All right, give me 50% complete. Okay, save it. Come back over here. Close this guy. Let's open it back up again. Now I'll test it. Boom. See? 50%. All right. Very simple to control the progress bar. All right. Two text boxes and a little tiny bit of code. The benefits of Visual Basic programming. You only need, what, four lines of code to make this really cool thing. And I'm not using the external control bar, or excuse me, the external progress bar. It's one of the things I talk about in that other tech help lesson is that I don't like using the external controls if I can avoid it. The progress bar, even the tree view control, things like that. I don't like using them because if they update them or they update access, sometimes they, they stop working, especially if you distribute this stuff to other people. I like to come up with solutions whenever I can that are 100% based on the access native controls, text boxes, list boxes, and so on. Oh, and by the way, if you're new to Visual Basic programming, if you've never done any programming before, watch my Intro to VBA video that's on my website on YouTube. It's free before you do any of this stuff. Again, I'll put a link down below for you. All right, so now we got the progress bar working. Now what I want to do is I want to look at these fields in here, and I want to say, hey, I only want to have this progress bar indicate the number of fields on here where the values are not null. Okay, where there's something in each of these boxes. So let's make another subroutine. So instead of when we click test, putting 50 in there, let's add these guys up and do some math. So in here, let's call this, uh, let's call this sub calc P bar, right? Calculate the progress bar. That'll be a custom sub, which I'm going to put right down here. All right, private sub calc P bar, All right? So that'll go down inside of this stuff down here. Let me re arrange my windows a little bit so you can see better. There we go. See that button, which is command 26 click is going to run calc P bar. Yeah, I didn't give the button a good name. I don't want Alex to yell at me. If you don't know who Alex is, you haven't watched enough of my videos, but we're not going to keep this button around. All right, we're going to get rid of it later. This is just to run this code right now. Later on, we'll run the code automatically. But for now, it's just a temporary button. Okay, so what are we going to do in here? Well, basically, we're going to do a little math, right? I know how many fields there are, five. I want to count up the ones that aren't null, all right? So we're going to need two variables in here, all right? Dim total fields as a long. And we're going to need another one. Let's just call it finished as a long. All right, I'm going to set total fields equals five and finished equals zero. Okay. Now I'm going to say if not is null first name, that's the first field, then finished equals finished plus one. And I'm going to do the same thing for each of those controls that are on there. Last name, email, phone, and address. All right, add them all up. So the next one in here is last name, then email, phone, and notice how they're capitalizing. I, I type them all in lowercase, and then when I move off of them, they capitalize. That's how I know they're matching up to the fields that are in here properly. And then address. Okay, there we go. We've added them all up. So now if they're all done, this should be 5. And of course, 5 divided by 5 is 1 or 100. So now I'm going to say my P bar, that's my function, Percent complete is going to be finished divided by total fields times 100 because I want that 1 to turn into 100 because the P bar is taking a number in from 0 to 100. All right, because this here would be a maximum of 1. All right, looks good. Let's save this. Come back out here. Now, if I push this button, boom, it goes up to 100. Let's say they didn't put the last name in there. Test it. Boom, 80%. Let's say this one in here where it didn't have the phone number too. Boom. Okay. So that's so that the progress bar is working now based on what's in here. Now, I don't necessarily want to have to click a button. All right. I want these to update automatically. So we have to tie an event to each one of these 
boxes after update events. The after event fires whenever you change the data in here and then tab off it, okay, or move off it in some way. All right, so open this up, events, after update, dot, dot, dot is the builder button. You might be asked what kind of builder you want. Pick the code builder, all right? I've got videos on that too. I've got mine set to always use the code builder. I show you how in my code builder video. I'll put a link down below. And I've got videos for the after update event, okay? But in here, all we need is one line of code, calc, pbar, that's it. That's why I wrote this as its own subroutine because everybody now can call that. All right, and I have to put this in the after update event for each one of these text boxes. There's no way around that, unfortunately, but it's easy to do and you only have to do it once. Okay, any other changes, just do right inside the calc pbar. So last name, after update, dot, 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 calc pbar. And I'm gonna put in some little tabbing in here. What I like to do is I'm gonna highlight this, including that line in front of it, all right? Copy, now I can go to the next one, email, after update, dot, 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 and then paste, and it comes in with the proper indentation. Keep your code nice and neat. I don't know how many times I get people sending me samples of their databases to look at, and I, I can't read it because they're indenting and there's no spacing. And I, no. If you want me to look at your database, you got to properly indent everything. After update, dot, 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 paste. All right? Form is important. It, it makes it easier to work with a database from a, from a programmer standpoint if you've got, um, uh, if it's pretty, if it's if it's properly commented and documented and indented, and we got rid of these buttons. I'm gonna delete this so it's not in here. The command 24 click, that's to open up other forms that we don't have in this template. Okay, and I'm missing something I like to have up top here, option explicit. I deleted it from my older databases and I should put that back in the template. That just says you have to explicitly declare your variables. And I like that because if you type something in, like you type a function name wrong or a subroutine wrong or a variable name incorrectly or a field name incorrectly, Access will actually yell at you instead of just assuming that's some new variable. You have to explicitly declare everything. Okay, so now I can get rid of command 26 click because I no longer need calc pbar. All right, save it. Well, I no longer need calc pbar in the button, I should say. All right, we can actually delete the button off the form. Let's get rid of that. You beat it. And the nice thing about my progress bar is that because the, the, the sizes are based on the size of the back text box, I can resize this without losing any functionality. That's why I designed it that way. All right. The front bar is changed as a, as a fraction of the back bar, no matter what its width is. All right. Save it. Close it. Open it back up again. Now, notice I got nothing in there. There's, there's a way we'll fix that in just a second. But for now, let's just put something in here. Rost, tab, boom, 80%. Delete the email, boom, back down to 60%. Phone number, boom. Okay, so the progress bar is working in the after update event for these guys. Notice, however, though, if I move from record to record, it doesn't work. Or when I open up the form that first time, it didn't work. So we have to fire that event also when the form opens and when you move from record to record. One event handles both of those. It's called the on current event. Again, I've got lessons on how that works. The form properties are right here. Open that up. Find on current under events, come in here, and guess what? Calc P bar. Okay, close it, close it, save it, open it up, boom, and it fires as soon as you open it. And when I move from record to record, now you can see everybody works. Let's get rid of a phone number here. Let's get rid of a name there. And you can see how now it works as I move from record to record. There you go. Want to learn more? In the extended cut for members, I'll show you how to use a loop inside your VB code so you can loop through the different controls on the form without having to add them all up individually. You can say for each text box on my form that I want to add up, add its value to the total number of text boxes. We'll count the fields automatically instead of individually. That way, every time you add a new text box or even delete one, you don't have to adjust your counts. We'll use the tag property to mark which text boxes we want to include in our count. Then I'll show you how to display that percentage on your list form, as you can see right there. And we'll add a little conditional formatting to make it look pretty, right? The guys who are finished will be green, then yellow, then orange, and so on. That's all in the extended cut, silver members and up. Get access to all of my extended cut videos. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos 
live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these Tech Help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page, and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with, or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.